when you look back today, you know, did you ever imagine you would be where you are today? Um, yes and no. Um, you know, basically, I, I definitely thought my uh, NFL career was going to be, you know, five Pro Bowls and five Super Bowl rings and on top of the world and that as well. But, um, you know, that's just me thinking positive and, and uh, you know, setting my goals real, real high. Um, of course, that didn't happen. Um, but, you know, I had a you know, great NFL career, just kind of, um, you know, it was, it was time to move on. And I knew I wanted to go into film, and I never thought it would, uh, you know, happen this soon for me in the in the film and television area, but it has, and um, that's definitely a blessing in itself. And um, basically, it's it's kind of where I would plan on being somewhere, but just didn't know it was going to happen like this fast at this time in my life, basically. Right. So a lot of people may not know about you, but you also graduated from um, Langston University. Um, did you have any um, memorable moments during your college career there? Oh, I had many. I had many. I think I think that's uh, that's where I grew up, though. I think that you know, coming from a predominantly uh, predominantly white uh, school when mm -hmm. I was uh, in high school, and then going to an all black university at Langston, um, it being a historically black university, it was it was kind of a uh, kind of a culture shock, and not of course you know the people, but just the attitudes that I had, I wasn't used to, you know, right. the, not a, not a saying bad attitude, I'm just saying that the people's, um, you know, the way they, the persona of people, it just wasn't what I was used to, and it made me grow up so quick, and, and uh, it just, it molded me, like, instantly, and, uh, you know, I, when I was there, I was, I was mad at the world, but when I left, I was so, you know, thankful and appreciated of what, you know, what, uh, how Langston made me the, the man that I am today, really. Right, right, no problem. So um, while doing your NFL career, you also played football over in NFL Europe for the Amsterdam Admirals? Um, yeah, yeah. Yep. I had got um, injured um, in uh, 2002 when I was with the Oakland Raiders, actually, and I sat out that whole season. Um, mm -hmm. So there were, like, at that time, you could pretty much just go work out for teams, um, you know, like once, maybe twice a week you go work out for a team, or uh, just go over to NFL Europe and kind of show, you know, show them that you're healthy, show them that, you know, you still got it and all that good stuff. So, right. Oh, uh, that's what I did. I just went over there, you know, I played 10 games over there, played a whole season, and that went pretty well for me. You know, I didn't get to see Europe like, like most <laughs> people get to see Europe when they go over there and visit. You know, I was kind of focused and, you know, in bed every night at, you know, 10 or 11 o'clock and up at, you know, 37 months for practice, I didn't get to hang out and things of that sort, but um, it was a great experience, and, uh, you know, I had fun doing it, and it got me up to the box, so, you know, that was a big goal anyway, so. So when you're um, overseas, you know, how did it feel when you found out you broke the um, league's receiving records and the number of passes caught and the yardage and touchdowns? Yeah, I can't hear you. Microphone check, Mic microphone check. Okay, <laughs> got you back. Um, it, it felt good. Um, it felt really, really good because, like I said, a lot of players have went over there um, for, of course, different reasons, um, and, and mine being no different than some of the people that came before me. And you know, from from Kurt Warner's, you know, to other Super Bowl MVP, Jason mm -hmm. Lome had you know went over to NFL Europe. So it was definitely an, an honor, and it was an honor when you know Amsterdam put me in their um, their ring of fame as well over there in Amsterdam. So it was just you know. Very, very appreciated of you know what what they appreciated from me doing from from the football <laughs> standpoint, and, and I just appreciate the opportunity that I had when I went over there, and you know that's what it was all about. Was right. about so with last week's to, uh, last Sunday Super Bowl, there, you know, I, were, did any of your teams win, or was you fruit for anybody special? Play some good football and get back to the states and play some more football. You know, me, I could I could play football year round. That's just you know the, the, the love that I had for it. Um, so it was, it was fun, you know, and definitely appreciate this. Uh, well, I got a lot of players on both teams. I got like you know, I still I'm pretty good friends with like the Shade Towns and then Heinz Ward, Byron Leftwich, um, you know James Ferry. I played with at the Jets. Uh, Tyrone Carter. I played with at the Vikings. We all played for the Steelers, and um, you know, so I was definitely rooting for them guys to do well. And on the other end, you know, Larry mm -hmm. Fitzgerald, which I know he was a ball boy when I was with the Vikings. So I've known him. I used to go to all of his high school games and watch him and, you know, try to stay after practice with him a couple of times and throw some balls with him while we were in training camp and things of that sort. Um, and he's like a little brother to me, and I talk to him, like, you know, pretty much once a week now. 
and uh, you know, so I was rooting for him as well. Um, and and Craig right. Holden, you know, he had came down to Boca and worked out with us when we would work out in Boca in the off season. Right. Uh, so it was definitely just rooting for my guys. I really didn't matter, you know, who who won. Um, I was kind of, I thought Larry Fitzgerald was going to get the Super Bowl MVP after he scored that last touchdown. Right. But of course, you know, Pittsburgh went straight down the field and San Antonio Holmes did the same thing, so he got Super Bowl MVP. Uh, but it was just it was a great game. I just wanted to see it. I love watching good football. Uh, so that was the main, you know, focus. Right. I'm just watching the game. No watch my so what would you say well. some of the, the um, disadvantages and advantages of uh, being an NFL football player? Uh, Fitzgerald knows he's got to, you know, get put the team on his shoulders again for the next, you know, for hopefully five to ten years and, and, and go get another another shot again. Right. Right. Uh, disadvantages because people who let you like that's all you can do you know especially now that I'm you know I'm out a lot of people look at you well you play football so you're just supposed to go around and do autograph sessions and and live the retired life and I'm like no I, I got other gifts you know people just it's hard to get that out of their head like once they see you you know doing something at that level, they don't think that you can do anything else at that level. And, of course, you have to start giving them examples like the Magic Johnsons and the Michael Jordans and the, you know, people who branched out outside of their sport and still, you know, were looked at right. as geniuses in another field. I mean, you know, Magic Johnson is a genius marketing guy, you know, genius businessman. And um, you can take, you know, Russell Simmons from just not just doing music, but he branches out on a lot of different things. And I think people, you know, they just put Correct. you in that box Correct. and they don't want to let you out. You know, he's like, no, you're only the football player. You really have to fight to get out of that box and prove that. Great. So what advice would you give some of the younger children today who are inspiring in your footsteps like, oh, to become professional be sports players or musicians or even as actors? As he was when he was playing football. And that's, you know, it, it just takes a while to get there, basically. Which, you know, if it's, if it's worth having, having it's, it's definitely worth the wait. Right. Uh, just go get it. You're going to have so many people, and you can't do it too slow, too small, too short, too fat, too ugly, too can't seen, can't do this. Just go do it. I mean, you have 17, 16-year-olds becoming billionaires on the Internet. You know, why Why can't you mm -hmm. go fulfill your dream? And the, it's not going to be easy. You know, you have to – it's going to be a lot of – you know, downtime, a lot of alone time, a lot of people saying he's different or he's weird. Because I didn't really, I didn't really see people like me until I got to the league. Like people, right. I was always the, the outcast guy. Like, why you work out so much? And why you do this? And why don't you go out? Why don't you drink? Why don't you smoke? And you know, once I got to the league, I saw a lot more guys like me were around. And college and high school just wasn't like that. And I would, I thought I was the weird one. You know, it wasn't. I was just focused on one thing. And it doesn't matter what you're doing. You can talk to, you know, the Russell Simmons, Tiger Woods, Jay-Z, Michael Jordan, Bill Gates, and everybody who, you know, had made it to their 1% of their of their career in their field. It, right. They have the same story. It was about five to ten years of their some even that they focused on one thing and one thing only. And it wasn't about the money. It wasn't about the chicks. It wasn't about the fame. It wasn't about nothing. It was just about being the best at your craft, whatever it may be. And everybody's got the same story. So until you take those years out of your life,